people going down Sheikh Zayed's ward or the road across, or you 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 find a five thousand rupee note. Five thousand rupee note is a big deal in Pakistan, especially. What do you do? Let 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 me have the funny responses first. You live in Gurbarg, you would. What about the rest of us? <laughs> I, I don't know, that's an intra class joke. Okay, what else? No, seriously. Now, now that the jokes are hopefully over, you guys, I mean, generally, your generation is very, you, you like jokes a lot. Everything needs to be in a jokey form. Eh? I crack a joke. Everyone becomes alive. Now, I'm going to go a little bit later. I'm going to go to the next Anyhow, so you found that note. You know the value. So, as soon as the visual of the note came on your retina, it was transmitted to the occipital lobe. As I mentioned yesterday, the, the, back, the back of the head. There, it was processed. Just the vision, the look, the image of the, of the note was received in one section, processed in another, identified in a third section of the brain. Just the image. It took three separate, distinct, separate areas to just identify what this object is. I'm not talking about the value or the eventual decision that you made. No. Abhi sirf image ki baat so just the image took three areas. What I'm trying to tell you is functions of cerebral cortex are very complex. It's, it's not really a simple list when you want to really understand it. So you identify it with these three. What now to do about it? Pick it up. If you pick it up, another section of the brain gets activated. And you know which section that is. You know that the motor cortex, the pre-motor cortex, and the frontal. The frontal is activated throughout. Looking at it, opportunity. So the frontal lights up. I'll show you the picture of the PET scans, which they ran on brains working. So we actually know that a thinking brain has multiple stuff lit up in the brain. How very interesting is that? So while you're looking at the, the thing, this lights up anyway. Because what is this doing on the floor? It's intriguing for you. Our, and the visual image is processed here. Now, picking it up, lifts up the motor cortex. Then comes the decision. What to do with it? What to do with it will lit up the limbic system, which is motivation and emotions, intentions, both good and bad, and the frontal cortex. Again, more. This is just this, this one little thing. How can you write it in one line? It's, it's difficult. But this is how it goes. This is how the brain works. This is how the cerebral cortex works. Can you give me a sign that you understand? It's very difficult for me to work this. And I think by now you understand that I need feedback. You are wearing masks. I can't see you. So a nod in the which the uh, autolith organ is being all picked up here. Come on. Maggie, what is this? A nod would be nice. And this can be a no. Sir, I did not understand or I don't care. Both are fine with me. They're fine with me because the test date is coming. See, now this is the key word. This is what the histology group will be very active about. Finding money, okay. concert orchestra example. Very, very, very interesting. This is a, this is an issue, which hopefully someday one of my students will work on. The physician scientist. The issue is, the brain is full of neurons, and in a live brain, in vivo, 
we need, we want to understand. And there are like two, three mega projects, one in the European Union and one in the US. They have a 10 year project started with 2014, around, around that time, a 10 year project which is very sophisticated, which uses all these imaging techniques in humans to work out high resolution photographs and videos, trying to understand what goes on in the live human being's brain. So this is a current issue. Abhi this year, 2024. So this is something that we are talking about a very live, hugely funded, uh, mega research project in of the world. The European one has enlisted 135 universities in the world. 135. And these are not your, obviously, small universities. These are big universities. And they have worked out one thing. I, I read it somewhere. They said they are making a digital uh, copy of the brain, a digital brain. And they have worked out that it will take thousands of computers to, to manage this digital brain and those computers haven't been invented yet because the processing power of each of these thousand computers needs to be much more than what is available today. It's, it's baffling what happens in this head of ours. You do, bete, the point was not to disturb me. Who's talking? Hello, Thank you. The back, the back. So, for the, the multitude of computers, okay? The concert. Ah, concert. Thank you. Abdullah knows how my brain works. So the challenge here is to work out how the whole thing works together. It's huge. It's they they are overwhelmed by this challenge. Let's let's make a simplified version of it. Can we work out how a simple neuron functions? We worked that out. We know that depolarization excites it, hyperpolarization inhibits it. We have worked it out. Now what they did is let's study a pool of neurons. How does a so basal ganglia? Many pools of neurons, but let's say take one pool. So they did some experiments, etc. etc. They're not happy. Why aren't they happy? They're not happy because of the orchestra exam. So you have gone to a concert hall to listen to an orchestra. I don't know if you know what orchestra means. Concert. Concert. Many musical instruments with three idiots trying to sing. Concert. Now, if you want, if, if this is the analogy of the brain, what they have been able to do maximum is look at the sound produced by one instrument, one neuron on a pool. So imagine going to a concert and just be able to hear one of the entire orchestra. That's nothing. You want to hear everything. So the brain, the, the analogy is, there are mu these multiple neuronal groups. They not only work independently, but they also affect each other. So if you are to hear a flute separate in a separate musical piece, it would sound different. But when put in, in an array of musical instruments, it will sound different. The one who knows that this note is of the flute would know. Somebody who doesn't have intricate knowledge about music wouldn't even appreciate that. Yeah, This is the challenge. Finding out how the different parts of the brain, so that 5,000 rupee note example, or the, or you, you saw a flower and you want to pick it, smell it, whatever. These, when these different parts lit up, how do they interact with each other so that we arrive at what we do, the action. The last example is even more complicated. A moving object. So a ball, a football, uh, a, a bouncing ball, or a cricket ball coming towards you which you have to hit or catch. This is very complex when you look at it from the brain point of view. Again, if this stuff is making sense to you, and if you are interested in this stuff, please do follow up this, this sense that you are having right now. This, if it interests you, you have a bone called research in you. From 
So purely from research point of view, imagine an image of the 5,000 rupee note, but not 5,000 rupee note. It is bouncing. The ball is bouncing. Oh, like this. Like this. Imagine now how would occipital lobe process this data. It works in frames. So one image at a time. Not really, but let's understand this. So one image of this ball in one coordinate, then another coordinate, then another coordinate, and then back. The ball is bouncing, let's say, in a vertical direction. Like this and back. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the cord, I'm simplifying this. So the cortex would work it out in these six frames. Then put it together and make a video of it for processing. And the brain would then know, ah, uh, ball is bouncing. And it's obviously instantaneous. When you see a ball bouncing, you know it's a ball bouncing. It is, all right, this is, this is too much slow motion that I've gone into, right? In the ball bouncing example, cerebral uh, uh, occipital lobe obviously is lit up a lot, but at the same time, frontal cortex lits up again. And different areas of the brain lits up again. How does this happen? Why does it happen? Who tells the frontal cortex about the bouncing ball? Because the information is being received in the occipital lobe. And so on and so forth. This is the problem. 